Hello and welcome to the channel. We are the Hollow Grumps. I am Colm. And I'm Liam. And we're here today to talk to you about episode 9 of Star Trek Picard Et in Arcadia Ego. And we have some opinions that are pretty rough. But before we do that, if we could get you to like, subscribe, and comment as you're watching as well, because we always appreciate comments. Now, Liam, what did you think of this episode? Oh, dear God in heaven. How, how do I answer that question? It was... A dumpster fire. Yay! Yes, I've said it. It was terrible. It was, in fact, the worst episode of Star Trek Picard. And I know we're going to get a lot of hate for saying this, because maybe there are people out there that enjoy this. It was dreadful. It was so bad. I mean, it was... Oh, my God. <laughs> Maybe you can articulate it uh, better than I can at first, or should we just dive straight into the review? There have been things in my life that have been bad. There are things in my life that have been terrible. But none of them can amount to the misery I felt in watching this episode. This dumpster fire of an episode was not only bad Star Trek, it was bad television. The only nice thing about the episode was a little bit of CGI, and that was it. A couple of CGI flowers in space. Yeah, flowers in space. Let's not explain how they got there, because why not? Why At would first, we? they kind of bothered me, but then I was like, yeah, you know what? In, in hindsight, the, the thing I did enjoy were the flowers in space. In the big picture things, if you're liking the flowers in space, then you got, you got a good time ahead of you. Okay, so this episode was directed by Akiva Goldsman. We've all seen Titans. I've seen Titans, and I really wish I hadn't. This is... <laughs> Akiva Goldsman destroyed it. First season of Titans is pretty decent. Second season of Titans is terrible. Oh, my God. And this was just a little glimpse of that again. I had PTSD from watching this episode. It was that bad. We didn't even take down who it was written by. I think it was, like, M Michael Chabon and... Three people. Yeah. Three. It just had teleplay. Yeah. Okay, so the episode opens with the ship, the HMS Grande, flying through that Borg transwarp hub. We find out that the HMS Grande has traveled 25 light years in 15 minutes. But who cares, because they do this all the time in current Star Trek. And as soon as they arrive at Capilius, is that the name of it? Sure, why not? I don't care. They said it once and then never said it again. They arrive at Capilius and Narek. Oh, Narek. Narek. Handsome Narek. Oh, he's so he's so handsome so and dashing. Handsome. Oh, and uh, he shows up and attacks the HMS Grande and um, Rios. Put the madre. Despite the fact that Rios is in just a normal old ship and Narek is in a miniature warbird, he loses because you know. In, in fairness, they did have the flowers to help them. Ah, yes, the flowers. Thank Very. God for the flowers. Like, why flowers? Why I mean, not? of all the things that they could have had, I know they're like the, oh, the Daj uh, or Orsidium. I presume they're going for that type of idea. Yeah. Because Daj how did, was named How that. did they invent these? I, I Okay, I don't care. I don't care. They're no. simply um, tractor beams. I mean, surely there are much easier um, devices that they could invent that aren't so complex as a couple of flowers. Uh, the fla So flowers attack all of the ships. And of course, the Borg cube shows up as well. Because... There's no point in excluding that. Just to crash on the planet, so we can have Seven of Nine and Elrond. I mean, Seven of Rhine. What I noticed, more than anything about this scene, there was far too much going on. You far... noticed that? I No, I noticed that. I was like, at first, oh, maybe this will be an interesting space battle. But... Whoa, whoa, whoa! But I couldn't even keep track of everything that was going on. Then all of a sudden, the Borg cube shows up. Then there are flowers in space. And then the Borg cube doesn't even get to attack anyone. It just gets pulled into the atmosphere. But they land on the planet and Picard spazzes out, which um, leads into his neuromotic syndrome. So we get um, some kind of flashback for Picard, which kind of looks like another trailer for the episode. They probably just they probably just re uh, reused an old trailer. And then uh, he wakes up to Agnes screening, or scanning him, rather. You've been asleep this whole time. Wake up. Wake up. We're almost there. Yeah. We crashed and survived. <laughs> Picard's neuromatic syndrome is kicking in. and She's detected this with an old tricorder. I, I expected them to use one of the old flip-out ones. You know, the... TNG ones. Yeah. 
Uh, he informs the crew that if they speak to him about his mortality or his impending doom... It'll really upset him. Yeah, Piss him off. He'll be pissed off. So better not do that. Don't bring it up. So the crew then gears up to head out into Tatooine and, and find the Borg Cube. Except this Tatooine has blue trees. They probably just filmed it at... Uh, at Patrick Stewart's ranch. California ranch or ranch. Akiva Goldsman's ranch and they're like, oh, we don't have much money yeah, for blue, this right blue, now. Blue tree. We blew it all in that Borg cube. And flowers. Yeah. So they they get to the Borg cube and it kind of reminded me of the scene from um, The Rise of Skywalker where um, they reach the ruins of the Death Star and uh, we, we kind of wanted... Um, we wanted her to take out the dagger and just point at the cube. Look, it's crashed. The, the holocron is there. So uh, Picard, Elrond and Seven reunite on the Borg Cube and we get some really unwarranted and uncalled for Voyager music. For like four seconds? What was the payoff? She stands up there lording over people with the with a spotlight on her. I swear it looked like I was watching theatre. They are using the music as, as member berries. Yeah, I was, I was inspired. Yeah, it's like, oh, here's Quark. Oh, poor Quark. Uh, Quark wasn't in it, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Quark Stay was on tuned. the planet. Stay tuned to this episode for more Quark. <laughs> uh, Picard wants Elrond to help get the cube defensive system online. Has Has Elrond ever at any point demonstrated that he's has an ability for anything other than murder? I mean, how is he going to help put the defensive systems online? He can talk to people. He can tell them to choose life. Choose life. Maybe this is uh, to lead us onto a uh, spin-off Elrond and Seven of Ryan series. Oh, we can only hope. Section 31 with Elrond Seven. Woo! Well, I'm triggered. I'm just furious in general. Uh, so we get our pandering shot of the entire um, crew. Awesome. Everyone just stands in a line and poses while they wait for the camera to pass yeah and they meet a uh, synth who has the data eyes and kind of golden skin and things start getting weird from this point on everything just 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 collapses in on itself it's like a black hole at this point it is like the gravity of this episode became too heavy with all these bombshells and it all just imploded i actually wrote down during it can't keep up with notes synth does not compute yeah it was what? What happened? But but Liam, your favourite actor is back. <laughs> I, I actually felt embarrassed for Brent Spiner. I, I felt like they wrote this entire scene and then they were there like... Was, there was never a reference to the fact that um, Soong had a child. It, he always implied that his children were the androids. And now all of a sudden he has a 70-year-old child. Have you noticed that uh, Soon always looks the exact same, all of his relations? Like, we go back to the episode it's of Enterprise. Enterprise yes. yeah, and it's... <laughs> Do you ever think they're genetic clones? Yeah, that every time Soon wants to have a child, he just clones himself with a little bit of mixed DNA in there. And maybe that... maybe the, the, the Reapers, I mean, the, the, the synths. Yeah, the are, Reapers. That are, that are stuck out in, in space, in their space pods. So um, we meet uh, Dr. Ulton Inigo soon. And he's probably just another character for them to kill off. But, you know, Brent Spiner can pop up anywhere in Star Trek, so it doesn't matter. All right, so we've we've gotten to the biggest issue we had with this whole episode. Uh, I'm going to take this away because this hurt me on levels that I can't really... I can't verbally convey how much this upset me. There is a synth that looks like Soji. It's called Sutra. Yes, it's called Sutra. Who cares? She notices Jurati has felt the the admonishment, I believe it's called, isn't it? Or whatever it's called. She felt it, so she's like, Ah, so it's inside you. Yes. Well then, I will... I've been studying Vulcan techniques. Like, it doesn't make sense. How can a how can an android do these things? How can an android just have the ability to have psychic powers? Oh Liam, we're drowning! Let's grow gills! Mind melding androids. I'm done. I am dreading episode ten. I've been dreading every episode up to this, but episode ten, I feel like I'm going to war. This is hurting. You know what the biggest problem I have with what these people are doing to our, our fandom? 
they did it with Star Wars as well, you know, the, the force teleporting lightsabers in between people and all this type of thing. And now they drew it the same with Star Trek where, okay, anybody can mind meld, like even robots can do it. There is such a rich source of material that they have to work from and such a rich universe and world that has already been built. Why do they need to keep creating these new random things to make the universe that little bit smaller? There is no point. I mean... If you wanted this character to mind melt, just put a Vulcan on the planet. It doesn't matter. She read a book, though. Like, she read a book and suddenly she knows how to mind meld. Does that mean everyone can mind... Can Klingons do it? <laughs> da, da, da. Just, there's probably a point in Star Trek canon that we're missing that, um, that I'm sure a human did mind melt. I suppose you can understand, considering everyone can do the Vulcan nerve pinch. Well, now they can, yeah. I think originally it was meant to be kind of a, a, a psychic... A psychic pressure point. Yeah, because obviously you can't, it's, it's impossible to do that in real life. Lord knows I've tried. <sighs> right, let's move on with this. So, so the, the great secret of the, the Zatvash is that there are synthetic life forms waiting in space. And if the synths get too evolved, they can call on them. And the synths will answer the call and kill all humans, or all life forms. All, all organic life will be destroyed because it might destroy all synthetic life. But yeah. this all seems like it's been written before, and it has. If anyone's ever played the game Mass Effect 3, they'll know that, well actually the Mass Effect series in general, they'll know there are these synthetic life forms called Reapers, who come around every 50,000 years to kill off all organic life. So that the cycle can begin again. Basically so that organic life cannot create synthetic life that will eventually kill them. So, I mean, this kind of story has been done before. Done to death, really, at this point. They also made the Borg Cube give a Reaper Bois. If you know what a Reaper Bois is, you know what a Reaper Bois is. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'd like to also point out that I didn't want to... I shoot myself in the head or gouge my eyes out after I learned the secret of the Zatvash. So, it was as much of a letdown as I thought it would be. Yep. Uh, so, not not Data, maybe Lord, chastises Jurati for killing Maddox. And uh, it turns out he's trying to create a body to implant human consciousness into. He's putting his own brain in a body. Something will end up happening where... Probably Jurati's brain will have to go in there. Or Picard. Picard will live forever in a young, vivacious body. Is that the idea? That they can Like if, if they want to Picard. bypass the... Oh god. Oh my god. You, you, you just gave them the idea. They can have Star Trek Picard except young, young ethnic Picard. Yeah. Just, can... just to make the show even that, that bit more diverse. And then, then, of course, you can have the scene with Patrick Stewart passing the lantern onto... Picard, Pass, literally then, passing a torch onto him. Yeah, and then then Michael Burnham can meet up with young Picard in the future because he's immortal now. Oh no! Yeah, we're gonna have to send this to CBS as soon as all this virus stuff goes out of the way. Okay, but if they use that idea, I, I claim rights to it. Synth sexy Picard. Maybe Hello. I can audition for Picard. Yeah, shave your head and just yeah, put on a British accent. Let's let's get to the yeah, end of this. Move on. So, Sutra. Freeze Narek and Narek murders one of the other androids because why not and he runs off to the Borg Cube and he does a very silly run <laughs> run while you can <laughs> you'll never uh, catch me <laughs> and uh, yeah so Shizo's dead and um, not Data maybe Lore can't seem to fix her how come it's so easy to kill them off like that I mean, the maybe, they're, he... maybe they're really close to being organic they why were... did they make them so vulnerable but they still have superhuman strength. But if he could build them like that, he'd know all of their mechanics or biological mechanics inside out. He makes it sound like Narek just gouged out her eye and he can't fix the eye. But yeah. no, she's dead. It went all the I way mean, into her brain. Sure, Data was blown up into the past and all he had was a head that was stuck onto his body. from, Or his, his 300-year-old head was stuck onto his current day body and he's yeah, fine. Yeah, but, but I would argue he's modular. You can take off parts of his body, couldn't you? Yes, but I presume they still have the same type of... I don't like know, that, that, one, brain. that one in the stasis thing looked pretty human or pretty organic, like synthetic organic, like fake meat, you know? So but if they're, know. if they're that human and they're that vulnerable, how can how can Doji punch her way through bulkheads, like metal bulkheads, if Look, she's just as I, vulnerable I as the rest I don't have answers, Liam. I don't. Does she have like a little uh, shield system that whenever she I punches things, I I activates I, I, the shield? I don't have these answers. I, I, 
Uh, ask Akiva. Yeah. Uh, the hashtag Ask Akiva. Hashtag Ask Akiva. Does, does he have Instagram? I don't know and I don't care. It can be like the Michael Chabon thing where he breaks down what's going on through his head because writing has got to the point that um, it's no longer enough to be left employed that it's so bad that he has to explain everything to everyone. And this isn't even it's so bad it's good. This is so bad. I can understand why so many reviewers have quit the show. I can completely understand it. It's terrible. Oh, oh don't forget to tell Starfleet that uh, O is a spy. But oh I... yeah, uh, Starfleet, Starfleet. Uh, I've made first contact, a uh, first contact protocol as opposed to Starfleet. Oh, she's a goddamn spy. Commander O. Commander O. And then O shows up at the end in her kind of uh, twisted bird of prey. Her no, f- uh, Romulan been, warbird. It, it's been flattened. <laughs> flattened. Yeah, it's been it's been twenty five percent different to did it. Yeah, it's just. It is just a line, a, a, basically a semicircle with a with a beak. What was wrong with the old one? I liked the old one. It was really cool, but it has to be different because why not? It's been thirty years. At least it kind of looked like it. At least that the, the bridge section kind of looked like it. Well, I'm sad now. So we get loads of speeches then. I love speeches. They're so eloquent and verbal and pointless. Uh, everyone gets the chance to make a speech. It's really nice that everyone stops talking to let everyone make a speech. Can you imagine what that would actually be like in real life? Imagine all those people standing around. One of them would have been having a conversation with another one saying, Oh, what are you going to do later on today? I don't know what I'll do later today. Shut up back there. Like, everyone just watches as everyone makes a point. It's like it's been a court case or something. And do none of the other synths have personalities? They or all just kind of stand around a- staring. Opinions, yeah. You two, take take him away. The two bald ones, <laughs> the generic uh, goons. <laughs> well, we we modelled them after goons. <laughs> palookas, you big palooka. palookas, coming yeah. to take me away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is bad. Like this is bad enough that people should be worried about Star Trek as a whole. If this is what it's going to continue to be, there was absolutely no payoff in the episode, in my opinion. Well, it is a two-parter. But it didn't even leave me excited, like, what's going to happen next? I just know what's going to happen next. The the synthetic space evil is going to almost get there and get sent back at the last second. Narek and Doji will team up and, and save the day. And Narek will sacrifice himself at the end. Because we all know that Doji's the lost heroine of the, sh- of the show and she will find her way back to the, back to the light. And maybe Starfleet will show up with Riker at the head of it. Wouldn't, God. That, wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be great? Although the, I'm happy with what they did with Riker and, and Diana Troy. I'd rather they not introduce them after seeing this because they can only do damage to them. Well, they could show up with LaForge and Beverly Crusher and Q. God, imagine this was all just a dream. Wouldn't that be great? Right, let's wrap this up because I can't be negative all day long. So... Thank you very much for watching. If you like what you see, if you like what you saw, think about subscribing. Maybe even comment below if you have any opinions on the episode yourself. And as always, we've been the Hollow Grumps. I'm Colm. And I'm Liam. And remember, existence is futile.